jungle junkie. Urban Jungles Radio, Danny Mendes from Urban Jungles Radio. Danny Mendes from Urban Jungles Radio. Danny, Danny, uh, well, welcome to Thomas Cobb. Some of you may have heard of Thomas's recent plight. Um, he's living out in Utah, and he just basically found out that his reptile collection is illegal and he's having to deal with the repercussions of that now thomas why don't you give us a little bit of background on what actually went down so a little bit of background uh from what i can get from the neighbors in the community and the police themselves news reporters and so forth was uh, I was washing this past Sunday, um, you know, about a week ago tomorrow, some brand new ARS big boa bins out in my uh, front yard on my property. Um, they're brand new, and we were just washing out in case of any, like, manufacturer resin, chemicals, or whatever before we put any animals in them. And so we were just using a, you know, soap basin and spraying them out with a power washer. And apparently with that, the – I'm sorry, hold with that, the, um, one of my neighbors drove by and um, apparently called my local city ordinance and said that I was growing something or raising something. They weren't sure. And I'm a transparent, honest individual. I had no idea that I was in violation. Um, the particular violation that apparently I am in and with is due to not maintaining an exotic animal permit due to the ordinances of the city that I'm in. So because this um, unknown neighbor to me still at this point uh, contacted the local ordinance police, which is, you know, local PD in essence, um, they came out to investigate not knowing what they were going to find. Um, I didn't feel that there was any need to hide anything from anybody because I didn't know that I was doing anything incorrect, illegal, wrong, whatever. Right. And so I allowed the police to come into my house and also allowed the um, animal control to come into my house. And they uh, toured my home. Um, I custom built my basement from the ground up, specifically uh, a room specific down there to house reptiles um, safely. Ambient heat, um, personally humidified or, you know, separate humidity from the entire house, uh, you know, for the health of the animals. And I run Freedom Breeder and ARS Rex and everybody, um, heat panels in the back, Herbstat 4 Pros, um, the best of the best stuff that you can buy. And even the, the police officer that toured the, toured the home or, you know, toured my boa area and the animal control officer both said that they would give their recommendation that the uh, city council or I guess they, they deem it the director or whoever to grant me an exotic animal permit. Um, fast forward a day later, the officer, the ordinance officer that came out, he um, called me and said, well, the news has hold of the story to uh, maintain face or save face in the essence of Cottonwood Heights and, you know, their, their legalities, upholding the law, so on and so forth. He said that he was going to be forced by his superiors to find me. And so they did write me a Class C misdemeanor ticket for uh, uh, not maintaining an exotic animal permit. Um, with that, they then said that I had that one-week time limit to remove the animals from the home. Um, now, one of the sergeants, who I believe is the sergeant who made the decision not to leave, allow the animals here, is now stating that even with an exotic animal permit, that you're only allowed one boa constrictor, which is actually incorrect. Um, I, I have a copy of the ordinances handed to me from the exact officer that came to investigate that states um, an exotic animal's definition is an animal whose natural habitat is not indigenous to the contiguous 48, you know, or, you know, 48 states, uh, lower 48 in essence. Um, so anything from an, uh, you know, uh, a Cayman anole or Cuban anole to a Jackson chameleon to a ferret or sugar glider to a parrot um, is, de is in essence considered an exotic animal. It then says that to own an exotic animal, you must maintain an exotic's permit. Now, remember that anything non-indigenous habitat-wise to the United States is considered an exotic animal. So anyone in the, the province or, you know, the township, in essence, which is a privatized community, um, you know, out of the jurisdiction, well, not necessarily out of the jurisdiction of Salt Lake, but not limited necessarily to Salt Lake's rules, um, is now in violation by not maintaining an exotics permit if they own anything from a bearded dragon to a ball python to a constrictor to anything that is not native to America, in essence. And they are, in essence, um, you know, saying that they're punishing me or that they're ticketing me and that they want the animals removed because I broke the law. 
and not knowingly uh, the law was broken. Obviously, that wasn't the intent. Um, in the stipulation that the police officer is now stating that you know you're allowed one boa constrictor and you're allowed five racks. That's actually not in the ordinance in any sense. There is no quantification for limitation on the number of animals or anything like that. It says to own an exotic species, you must maintain an exotic permit. To be qualified to maintain an exotic permit and be granted the rightful ownership of an exotic permit, you need to A, demonstrate the knowledge base that is conducive of the proper care of those animals. You need to show that the animals will be maintained in the proper and sanitary condition, and it needs to be shown and proven that the animals will not be a danger to the public, which has all been shown on my side. So in essence, I meet every qualification to get that exotics permit. But for some reason, they are pushing the, the envelope or letter, whatever you want to call it. They're pushing me and saying that now I can't maintain my animals, um, the if I even if I get an exotics permit, it only limits to one animal, which is not true because in the state ordinance it doesn't quantify that quantity. It doesn't tell anything about quantity at all for that specific species. So if it's deemed correct for me to own boa constrictors, I don't see why quantity is an issue if they're all properly cared for, which has already been stated. Well, especially you know, if it's already seems, been proven. It seems like this is an arbitrary number that they're pulling up initially because, like you said, they, there's really no there's no law. You know, on the books, stating yeah. a specific number or anything. So even the fact you have to kind of be a little, you know, befuddled by the fact that they're kind of making things up as they go along. Essentially, it seems. Yeah, like what what they're trying to do in essence, and and you know, I don't want to say the the it's done with malicious intent, but obviously there's political bias behind every every decision made um, law wise. Yeah. Um, you know, the one's an opponent or a proponent for another. It, it someone's going to go one way or another. Yeah. Um, what I'm finding is it's in essence trying to make it look like I'm some type of you know I guess a hoarder in essence, or that I broke the law so egregiously that they need to punish me, and it, it's kind of like they want to. Uh, they want to stand up and say, look, Cottonwood Heights, the people at Cottonwood Heights, we will uphold the law because if it was five or six animals, they probably wouldn't have said anything. Right. But for some reason, 29, 29 boas is much worse than 29 goldfish or six dogs or, you know, 14 hamsters or something like that. And, you know, we, I, in the past two days, obviously this has been aired nationwide at this point. Um, Associated Press did get a hold of it as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's posted photos and, and, you know, commentary and everything about the situation. Every single neighbor in the vicinity directly around my entire house, I mean, you know, north, south, east, and west, has said that they have absolutely no issue at all about the entire situation. And they had no idea that I had snakes, there was no smell. Uh, I'm, I'm not an exhibitionist. I don't take my animals outside. I don't put them around my neck and mow the lawn. They're in my climate-controlled, humidity-controlled, purpose-built room in my basement away from prying eyes so, in Freedom Breeder and ARS racks that are the best that money can buy. So just to clarify, you are a serious hobbyist. You maintain your snakes at the highest of standards. You know, aside from this obvious infraction that you weren't really aware of initially, which is kind of unclear, actually, if there actually is an infraction at this point from what it seems from what you're telling me. But aside from this, your animals are well maintained. They were inspected personally by officials from several different law enforcement departments and found to be completely, you know, within the realm of acceptable, obviously, because you weren't fine oh, at the absolutely. moment. And you own your own home. So, I mean... Yep. So you own your own home. This is your own property. I mean, you are basically, you know, minding your own business at your own home with your well-maintained snakes um, in very seriously kept hobby, you know, upper tier stuff. And you're essentially now getting harassed just because of the number of snakes, it seems, because it seems that that really is what the, the nerve stricken here is all about is just the sheer number of animals that people are uncomfortable with. I mean, they were citing rats that you had. Were these living rats or were these, were they actually counting your frozen um, stuff as well? So I, I do maintain a live colony of rodents. Um, when this came to head and I had that initial visit with the, with the ordinance police and the animal control, I had, um, Previously, uh, humanely euthanized by CO2 euthanization, um, a good portion of the rodent colony themselves. And um, with, with that, you know, I reduced my colony significantly. Um, I do maintain probably about 60 to 70 live 
um, but all the rest are frozen. Uh, bedding is, is a pine and cedar mix changed two times a week and, you know, in, in racks made for racks. And yeah, so, exactly. again... We were just completely appalled by the fact that, like, you probably maintain your stuff. I mean, as somebody who's worked yeah. at some of the most premier zoological facilities on the East Coast, you seemingly maintain your stuff better than most of the zoos that I've worked at. Yep. And this is really um, scary. It, you know, it, it was actually um, my, my vet here. Uh, her name's Dr. Harris. Uh, she is a good friend of mine um, and uh, my personal vet. She does house calls to my property Anytime I need any wellness check, anytime there's any issue for respiratory infection, um, she comes out and one of her nurses or, you know, one of her um, uh, vet techs comes out and we will handle any issue that's needed, um, everything from septazidine, which is a generic for Fortaz, to penicillin-based drugs, um, to amicacin, to whatever's needed, right. um, wellness checks, all that type of stuff. And she said... Um, she's also been the vet, you know, she's an exotic specialist, one of the few, you know, renowned exotic specialists in Utah, and she um, had stated, pers you know, per her personal opinion that it is one of the best kept collections she has ever seen. And, you know, coming from her, an individual that has worked on animals all the way from the Hogel Zoo to private collectors like myself to, you know, being an exotic specialist in this state that doesn't have many, to say that really made me feel, it was like a feather in my cap. And believe it or not, she came out Monday to actually do a wellness check on a half a dozen of my animals and, you know, to ensure the health. And, and obviously each time she comes out, albeit her being my friend, it does cost money because she has provided me a service. Right. But I will pay a vet to make a house call just if I believe any animal even has a respiratory infection. You know, even a minimal bubble, even a little hiss when I pick an animal up and I, I'm like, you know, I'm so freaked out about the health of my animals, she'll come out and she will, you know, personally see these animals and, you know, recommend any type of um, care that's needed. Um, my quarantine status before um, I had, had started using her um, the way I have was two months for every animal that comes into the collection. Um, we would quarantine them out in a, separate, in a separate room, and, you know, they would go through all of the mite treatments, all the checks, all the fecals, everything. And last time I saw her, she was like, well, you know, you quarantined for two months. Let's move it to three and hit the real zoological standard. And so everything I'm doing is based on science. It's based on the health of the animals. It's based on my love for them. And, I mean, I spend a lot of money doing it, but if you're going to do it, do it right. Listen, man, I wouldn't want to wish this on anybody at all, but I have to say deep down inside, there's a part of me that's glad it happened to you because you are such a prime example of yep. what we're supposed to be doing right. And it is such a relief to see this situation going down without a bad word to be said by especially by any of the authorities or the media which is yeah. unheard of because we all know how much the media loves a reptile horror story and the fact yeah. that you have not given them any of this is such a huge relief so i mean on behalf of the reptile community i want to thank you for being such a responsible keeper that being said um, I'm so sorry this is happening to you, dude. This is obviously clearly a case of some incredible bias, probably more political than anything, um, based on the fact that your animals are perfect and what you're doing is completely legal and you should be fine to do whatever you want within the, especially the confines of your own home. This is ridiculous. I mean, what are you going to do at this point? You, you've you been giving some time to comply. Um, are, are they going to hold you to that I believe uh, well so I, I spoke to the officer and he he had spoken to his his superiors and they they understand that obviously you know these laws are supposedly in place for a the protection of the people which I mean you know they're not a, they're not a harm or danger to any people anyway they need to take into consideration the wellness of the animals and I told them that you know to obviously find alternate location um, to properly house the animals. I'm not going to just take them, throw them in a sterilized bin, and put them in an unheated room. You know, I need time to set up the proper environment for the animals. And so they're giving me time, um, technically at this point, to, uh, you know, find a, find a copacetic situation for them in a mean, habitat. Uh, obviously not maintained in my home, in my purpose-built room. We're going to have to modis modify some other area or retail space or something um, to house them because there's no way that I'm going to be willing to lose my animals one way or another. Whether I have to sell them, it's not going to happen, or whether they're going to want to seize them, it's not going to happen. Um, I'll, I'll make 
whatever I need to do to, uh, you know, keep my animals happy, healthy, and, and my passion alive. Um, I'll, I won't let anybody take it away from me. Good for you. So at, th at that point, you know, I, I do have time. Um, I, I have been fortunate enough, um, like you guys reaching out to me, how community um, as a whole is really grabbing the bull by the horns on this one. Um, I have talked to Phil Goss personally about the situation, yes. about the ordinances, um, you know, the president of USARC. Yes. And um, we are, are definitely, um, you know, going to attempt to see if we can get a variance or a modification um, needed for me to maintain the animals here because there's no place better for them to be. And, you know, what it comes down to is I've proven it's not a risk to anybody and that it's uh, most care. There should be no reason in my in my right sense to think that we should move them anywhere else. Yeah, especially um, if your neighbors it's, it's, it's are all complying and, and your neighbors are completely fine with you. Yeah. I mean, there's there's no reason, there's no legitimate reason for you to have to move your animals. How long have you had some of these animals for? What's the longest you've had some of these, these animals? I mean, I've, I've, I've been keeping these animals for, you know, on and off. Um, so my first boa constrictor I got when I was probably about seven or eight years old, so roughly about years. Um, my, my oldest was about 2004, but, you know, just as, as boa keepers and hobbyists, we always, you know, change out stock, we change out animals, um, you know, throughout their lifetimes and things like that. And, you know, everybody at this point is a permanent animal in my collection. I'm at, I'm at, my, at the stage in my life to where maintaining the animals, feeding them, housing them, you know, m my home is built for these animals specifically. So every animal that I have, I have no intention of getting rid of. Obviously, when you're 18 years old, you know, fluctuations happen, life happens, you, 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 you get rid of an animal or sell an animal, but I don't need to do that. I don't need to sell them for, you know, a monetary gain. I don't need to sell them because I can't take care of them. I, you know, I want to maintain the animals the way I want to maintain them and keep them. And I've recently started, um, you know, giving names to animals that I wasn't to keep, but I've decided to keep. And, you know, it's, it's where instead of having to sell an animal to buy another one, I'm fortunate enough to be able to be like, well, you know, we'll um, save for a month and then I'll be able to get another animal while I can maintain the ones I already have. And so, you know, it, it, it's been a, a passion of mine since I was, I can remember my grandmother was a biology teacher. My mom, you know, she, she's a, a scientist in essence. And myself, my background's in biochemistry and genetics, and it's always been a love of my life. And to me... Just like, um, you know, the, the famous Utah herper out here always states that it's, it's genetic boa art, in essence. And the genetics, the, the fact that they're technically all similar, similar same species or subspecies, but you get so much variance depending on the genetics of these animals. It's just, you know, and anyone who pulls open or, you know, sees a picture of my Anna IMG female, almost completely black, but then they see that beautiful mystic iridescence, you know, Sticking to most people, even people who don't like snakes or reptiles. Um, I mean, literally right before you guys called, I had a neighbor over who I've been a neighbor to for about 10 months. The whole time I've been here, directly next to me. They said, we had no idea. We had no idea you had rats. We had no idea you had snakes. We're terribly snakes. Can we come into your house and see them? I'm like, hey, let's go in. So I gave them a full tour. I even got, you know, one, I got one and a half of them to hold the snake. So I got the, the <laughs> husband <laughs> held the snake for about, for about 10 minutes, and then the wife about half held the snake. So we got one and a half of them to hold the snake. Good and, you, I mean, to, to go from someone who is absolutely terrified and, you know, when they walk into the room, they keep their back to the wall, to actually handle the back end of a snake with the head away within 15 minutes, you know, all it is is a misunderstanding of the animal, ignorance, the fact that, you know, people think they're dangerous, that they eat dogs, that they eat babies, that they do these horrendous things that we see in movies. That's why they're in movies. That's not realistic. And so, you know, out of all of this, like you guys said, I'm using it as a blessing in disguise because if I can make a, a representation for the proper way to keep animals, the proper way to educate people about the animals, the safety of the animals, you know, the beauty of them even, uh, even if you're not around them you could still their beauty you know that's what I'm going to do and I it's unfortunate it's happening but you know uh, my life and and with the support system I have with my parents and my wife and my kids and you know all the people coming out from the entire herb community it, it's really a blessing in disguise to me because regardless whatever happens my animals will be taken care of and they'll be safe and they'll be mine 
but if we can pull together as a community and you know understand that a lot of this legislation is defunct, it's out of date, we need to have a voice and we need to stand together. You know, whatever local municipality laws are, doesn't matter where you are, everybody should check their laws. Everybody should obviously do everything as best as they possibly can. If they can't manage it, they need to find help to someone who, you know, with someone who can manage it. And you know, do right by the animals because it's not just about who has what or who has the coolest or who has the most expensive collection. You don't do right by your animals; you're doing it wrong. Absolutely, man. I couldn't have put it better ourselves, Thomas. Listen, man, you have our support 110%. You are exactly the kind of keeper that we love here at Urban Jungles Radio, somebody who's really into their animals and dedicated to them. What can the community do to help you out in this situation right now? You know, I think it, it just comes down to, you know, spreading awareness. And, and to understand that, that this isn't a time of, you know, because in essence, in, in, the initial, in the initial aftermath of this, like, you know, I was being attacked and your initial reaction is to attack back, you know, action begets reaction. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to be bitter and I wanted to be, all right, well, you know, people just don't understand me. And so what I did is I surrounded myself by the people that do, by the people that get me, by the people that are like me, you know, like-minded individuals, people that support me. And, you know, what I want to see, and, and not even just to help me personally, because I'll be fine. No matter what happens, I'll be good. But as, a, as, a, as that Herp Nation, as, as that, that the, the entire Herp community, um, you know, we just need to stand together. And, you know, if people want to have their voice heard, a, they can contact their local senator, local municipalities, and even if they want to contact mine, they have that ability as well, too. And, you know, what I've found, just like anything in politics, it's uh, you've got to make your voice heard. And if, if you're not willing to make your voice heard, if you're not willing to step up, I guess, man up or woman up, because um, we know we've got a lot of female keepers, too, that are as passionate about any guy um, keeping snakes, you know, you need to let your voice be heard. And... That's what we're doing. A lot of my local group here, um, they're definitely on my side. Uh, local rescue groups here that are going to come on my behalf. Um, like I said, I've spoken to USARC, and if that's needed, USARC has backed me 100%, which I'm grateful for. I donate to them every week, and there's a reason why, because they're, you know, that type of legislation protection is what we need as a, as a community. And, you know, I, it's something I love. I don't do it because I, I have to. I do it because it's an absolute passion. Always has been my entire life. And, you know, I'll, um, I'll, I'll take care of business on my end as, as well as I can. I hope that, you know, with, with Cottonwood Heights that we can come to some sort of variance agreement um, so that I can maintain the animals here, A, for the welfare of the animals, B, because, I mean, I love them and I don't want to, I mean, I can't even think of not being able to just go down on whim and check them. You know, I'm going right. to have to drive someplace else outside of the city if that's the case. Um, you know, I mean, I have night vision cameras and I, I will sit there in the middle of the night on my cell phone application and just watch the animals because that's my boa therapy. You, I mean, you guys hear it all the time, boa therapy, herb therapy. I mean, it, it, it's my zen zone. It's my, my meditation, my yoga. And, you know, I just hope that even, even if worse comes to worse on my end, that as a community, people can learn from this. If, if I can change one person's ideology, about A, the way they keep B, legislation or how much their voice matters, hey, you know what, then that will have been worth it. And it, it'll, it might be difficult on my end to, you know, change my scenario or situation. But as a community nationwide, you know, and even worldwide, because this, this has gone over to a lot of people across the pond, yep. you know, it, it's, it's going to let us know that the point of support that we have when we, when we band together, you know, uh, we have strength in numbers. And there are a lot of us. And if we're willing to, you know, step up and actually let our voice be heard, whether, you know, locally or not, that's, that's the important thing we need to do. So, Thomas Cobb, I have nothing to add to that. that junkies, 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 jungle, junkies, jungle, junkies, junkies, we are here.